I gotta be honest, even though I absolutely love emotional storytelling, it actually takes quite a bit to make me tear up when reading or watching something. And so the fact that this scene made me bawl my eyes out with a really weird mixture of feelings says a lot about the impact that the Ming's furiously loyal sacrifice on Zhou had in the story. And so while I would personally say that post Timeskip One Piece, at least so far, has had significantly fewer powerful and iconic moments than before the time skip, this one here easily can compete with them. Thus, I think it's no wonder that we have to talk about chapter 816 and episode 767 in our The Iconic Scene Analysis series. Trademark? So make yourself comfortable with some hot coffee, grab some tissues, and let's analyze one of the two biggest plot twists in the story of One Piece so far. Oh yeah, and if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's free and you get updates on any of my future videos. After witnessing all the horrors that Jack, one of the commanders of Kaido, had dealt to the Minx and their city in his search for Raizo, one of the main antagonists of the Yonko, Frankie, Robin and Brooke learned that Kinemon and Kanjiro have already landed on the island and met with Momonosuke. Since all the Minx have sworn under torture, pain and death that there is no samurai Raizo hidden on their island, the Straw Hats fear that their arrival will trigger and enrage the Minx, who apparently have suffered through all these atrocities for some samurai they don't even know. <laughs> However, the Wano samurai have already been noticed, and both Inorashi as well as Nekomamushi, the two rulers of the Minx that have been facing off with Jack, have already mobilized their troops in search for them. At the Whale Forest, the remaining Straw Hats, together with a confused Luffy, try to find Kinemon and Kanjiro to keep them from encountering any Minx. Finally, all four parties approach each other. When Nekomamushi and Inorashi, that have hated and avoided each other for years, meet each other, the tension between the two immediately rises. The Straw Hats, meanwhile, manage to knock Kinemon and the others out of view before they can get spotted, as they witness the two Ming leaders exchanging taunts. All of this is accompanied by flashbacks of their torture through the Beast Pirates, as they're put up on crucifixes after Jack used one of Caesar's chemical weapons to render all of the Minx paralyzed and unable to fight back. In the heat of their argument, both Nekomamushi and Inorashi draw their weapons, but before they can start fighting seriously, Kinemon steps up and shouts at them to stop. <laughs> Samurai. When the Minx recognize the Samurai, the Straw Hats expect the worst and try to convince Kinemon to flee. With Momo and Kanjo by his side, however, Kinemon proclaims himself as a Samurai of Wano who's on the look for his comrade Raizo. And at the peak of the tension, suddenly all of the Minx kneel down and reveal that Raizo is in fact safe. To the absolute shock of the crew, they explain that the Kozuki and the Mings have had a very old and deep going connection, and that they would never sell out a friend, even if it meant death. <laughs> I told you guys to get some tissues. Damn. Now, there are actually a number of reasons why this moment works so incredibly well. On a basic level, the basic story beats of this scene are actually quite similar to the first video of the series, Zoro taking on Luffy's pain on Thriller Bark. The focus of both scenes lies on a fierce display of loyalty in the face of pain and possibly even death. It's the ultimate display of honor and altruism, with no hopes or expectations of gaining anything yourself, but a clear conscience. Just as Zoro is willing to end his own life and dream for Luffy's sake, the entire Mink tribe is prepared to sacrifice their entire culture and race for one single samurai. One might even say that they'd be willing to give an arm and a leg for a friend. <laughs>
Now, even though this is quite ideological, it nonetheless works perfectly, because Oda has put in the necessary narrative groundwork and foreshadowing to make both moments feel absolutely natural and organic for these characters. Through this moment, Oda characterizes the Minx not only as a tribe of powerful fighters, but also as a nation that never even thought for a single moment about betraying their allies. As we now know, there was no traitor amongst them. All of them knew that Ryza was there, and they even had to restrain him to keep him from joining the fight and being caught. And for so many chapters, Oda made us believe that he really wasn't there. And we see them being tortured, poisoned and suffering for days for what seemed like no good reason at all at the time. Surely no one would be willing to lose a limb or even their life for some random samurai. And even if they did, surely at least some or one of them would put their lives or the lives of their loved ones first. But no. They all suffered through all of it gladly, which makes the Minx not only the most loyal, but also the most kind-hearted race in the story. And all of this of course becomes even more powerful in the context of Odin and his backstory with the retainers. His ability to inspire this level of commitment and determination in his retainers, as well as the tragic backstory for all of them, give this moment an even more powerful feeling on a reread than it already had in the first place. A truly inspirational scene. Now, the thing that amplifies this already powerful theme of loyalty and sacrifice even more, and that differentiates it from the Zoro moment, is the major plot twist that Oda pulls with the reveal of Raizo's safety. I personally think that throughout the first two-thirds of the Zo arc, Oda does a wonderful job of creating the impression that Raizo is really not here, and the Jack is either operating based on wrong information, or simply enjoys tormenting the Minx, or maybe both. The conviction with which the Minx lie and denounce the samurai in front of the beast pirates is portrayed quite convincingly, I think. And so the wow effect that is wonderfully reflected in the Straw Hat's reaction really increases the emotional impact of the twist significantly. Seeing the likes of Zoro and Luffy, both of whom have pulled quite similar moves before as well, genuinely shocked and moved by this really drives this moment home for me. In my opinion, this is actually the best plot twist in all of One Piece, besides maybe the reveal of CP9 on Water 7. And that had less of an emotional impact and more of a shock reaction. And beside all that, I personally feel like the anime did an exceptional job with this scene as well especially after the disaster of Dressrosa. In the manga, the double spread with the Minx kneeling and Neko Mamushi and Inorashi showing their relief at Kinemon's arrival really got me, and reading the chapter packed quite a punch. But this is one of these moments where music, dialogue and the visuals have the potential to amplify the scene even more. And in this case, the animators did a great job of representing all of this, I think. The original soundtrack, made especially for this scene in particular, is just great. Even just hearing it outside of the scene gives me goosebumps, and you can tell that it was tailored directly to this scene, because it works just perfectly. This, combined with perfectly timed silences and the individual close-ups of the Straw Hats and the Minx, make for a very emotional viewing experience that actually started a sort of positive trend in regards to the anime for me, that I had found quite disappointing during previous arcs. <laughs> And going away from the emotional impact of the scene, Oda also integrates quite a bit of world building and characterization into the Rise reveal. It gives us a much completer picture of Wano and its structures. 
For the very first time, for instance, we learn about Kozuki Odin, one of the most badass characters in the entire story, that traveled together with both Whitebeard and Roger, with whom he even set foot on the legendary island of Love Tale. We learn of his death and of Momo's true identity as the heir and leader of the Scabbards. And we finally meet Raizo. And not only do we get to know the person who the Ming suffered so much for, but we also learn about the existence of the Road Ponyglyphs as the signpost to Love Tale itself. In general, the Raizo moment forms the center of one of my favorite arcs. Zo is admittedly quite short, but very powerful in terms of both storytelling and world building. Up to this point, throughout the New World, from Fisherman Island until Dressrosa, there was a bit of a lack of focus on the Straw Hats as a crew and the arcs were also quite lengthy. With Zoe, we get a ton of great Straw Hat moments and the setup for the next arc that is solely focused around crew internal struggles. It's short and straight to the point, but full to the brim with information and story beats. And so, no matter how strong One Piece will undoubtedly get in the new world until we reach Love Tale, Raizo is safe, will always stay one of the most iconic moments after the time skip. And to keep the ball rolling, the next iconic moment I want to talk about is this one here. Oi, roll. <laughs> In my humble opinion, Corazon's character and his sacrifice for law are dramatically underrated. And so we'll be looking at that in the next video. Thanks guys. Peace.